Welcome back to Elevated Sports. My name is Kyle Johnson. My name is Billy Mock. And I, I think it's time for your weekly Rays update. It's time. It's the best time of the week. Let's just make it clear. It's time to talk hey, Rays man. baseball. Baseball. If you're a Rays fan, if you're a baseball fan, if you're a human being, just tune in right now. That's what we have to say about the Rays. This week has been a, a very busy week for the Rays front office. Yeah. A lot of offseason moves. Today, we're, you know, we're closing in on the arbitration deadline. Basically, for your basic fans that don't know what arbitration is, kind of complicated. Some of it seems a little unnecessary. Basically, you sign a, a player to a contract through, um, you know, say we uh, signed a player through 2023, but after 2021, he was arbitration eligible. To be arbitration eligible, you have to have played between three and six years in the league, okay? After that, the team has a choice where they can uh, offer the player a new contract, okay? And if they can't come up with a new contract for that player, if they don't come into an agreement by the arbitration deadline, then that player be goes before a panel of arbitrators and the player, they exchange uh, what they want for salary. The team puts up, you know, what they want to give them and the arbitrators come to a conclusion of what they want for the team and the player. Now, if a team decides not to sign them before the arbitration deadline, it's not like they don't come to agreement. The, the team is just like, we just don't want them anymore. That's when their contract is what is what gets what's called non-tendered. And basically, it's what you can call being designated for assignment. Like you're just basically being released from the team and you're being put out in free agency. That's what arbitration is. We had five players um, that were eligible for arbitration. All five of them uh, were given new contracts. Tyler Glass now, Woo! Hunter Renfro, Chaz Rowe, Oliver Drake, and Daniel Robertson. Obviously, Glass now, big piece to our pitching yes, staff. I love Glass now. Was supposed to be a silent candidate this year, uh, 1.8 ERA, I think it was, yeah. uh, before it, he got injured. His uh, uh, contract, 2.05 million for the 2020 season, and he'll be arbitration el eligible again. So we got him locked in for this year. Hunter Renfro, 3.3 million. Uh, Chaz Rowe, 2.1 million. And Oliver Drake and Daniel Robertson both signed them for $1 million contracts. So we keep all five of those guys. Any thoughts on that, Kyle? Um, I'm excited to get Glass now back. For sure. We talked about, I know we talked about, stop. We talked about him a little bit last week. And, um, you know, like he did struggle in that wild card or in the, um, the playoffs. ALDS. Yep. AL, yeah. Final answer ALDS. Struggled in the ALDS against uh, the Astros. But um, after like the first inning or two, he actually he got it together and he, he was pitching pretty well. Yeah. And in game one of that series, I mean, put together a great, you know, five innings, I think he threw. Uh, gave up two runs, I believe it was, but looked great. Um, and I, we expect him to have a breakout year for sure this year, you know, barring any injury. Right. Um, and th I do like to see them, you know, keep Chaz Rowe and Oliver Drake. Uh, you know, two, you know, key pieces to our bullpen. Obviously, they were going to, you know, get Hunter Renfro before arbitration. That's why we traded him, so he could play for us in the outfield. And then Daniel Robertson was one that was kind of on the, you know, kind of on the fringe a little bit. People were kind of wondering what they want to do with him. Uh, we may see him in AAA for most of this season, but we should see him in the big league lineup for a little bit. Um, we've made a few uh, trades this week. The first, actually, we'll get into the big one last. Yep. We'll get into this small one real quick. Demon Choi has been traded. <laughs> Before you crab your pants, no, Demon did not get traded. Yes, that was fake news. Um, Austin Pruitt, a pretty reliable pitcher for us. Uh, spent some time in AAA. Uh, spent some time in the big leagues. Came out of the bullpen. Was an opener for us a few times. Uh, one of the games I went to this year, we played the Indians. They started Pruitt, went six uh, shutout innings. He was a pretty reliable pitcher. Wasn't great, but he could get the job done. We traded him to the Houston Astros for prospects Cal Stevenson and Peyton Battenfield. Stevenson is an outfielder uh, in AAA, I believe, or if I don't have it right in front of me, it was I, I think it was either high A or triple A ball. 
hit 288, hit five home runs, had 59 RBIs. Pretty good um, defender. Could potentially see him in the big leagues this year uh, if, you know, if guys need rest, guys are injured. And then Peyton Battlefield, he's a pitcher, uh, was in double AA, A, triple A this year. 39 innings, went 2 and 1, 1.6 ERA, no, 0.97 okay. whip, and 46 strikeouts. Pretty good pitcher. And you know the Rays are all about pitchers. You know all, the Rays are all about prospects. So, you know, they're always going to go in for the prospects. Right. Um, something else the Rays acquired in that trade. They acquired the um, the Astro, the, the Houston Astros technology that they used to steal signs. So that, that's a big help for this season. Yeah, that would be, that'll be huge. Thank you, um, Houston. Yeah. Thank you for teaching us how to cheat. Little side note, the Red Sox and the Yankees are now also being accused of cheating. The Red Sox 2018 season, they won the World Series. They're being accused of cheating that year. Yankees haven't won a World Series in 10 years, and they still, they, they've they been accused of cheating, still weren't able to win. So if there's one team that you will never find cheating, I think it's the Tampa Bay Rays. Um don't need to cheat when you have G-Man. Exactly. This is true. G-Man Choice is the ultimate cheat code. Um, that leads us to the big trade. This was kind of a strange trade because yesterday the news came out that there was going to be a trade. We knew that uh, our left-handed prospect pitcher, Matthew uh, Libertor, was getting traded. And then there was five other uh, no-names that no one knew who was getting traded. The details didn't come out for later. It was a mystery trade, but we now have the details it's a big trade. We got rid of uh, our prospect, Matthew Libertor, top 40 prospect in the entire league. Um, got rid of him. He was great in the, uh, I believe he played double A this year for Montgomery. And then Eduardo Rodriguez, he was a catcher. And then we also traded off a second round draft pick to St. Louis Cardinals. In return, we got Outfielder and DH, Jose Martinez. Outfielder, Randy Arozarena. I thought it was Jose Molina. It was not Jose Molina. However, we would enjoy that. We would enjoy having Jose Molina back. Press up to pay respects. Jose Martinez. Just, Randy... just totally ignore everything I just said. <laughs> if you're an OG Rays fan, you know who Jose Molina is. Brother of Yadier Molina, who plays for the Cardinals. Uh, outfielder Randy Arizarena, and we also got a first round draft pick from St. Louis. I'd say a pretty even trade. I think it is interesting because, like I said, the Rays are all in on prospects and they're all in on pitchers. But here we are in this trade getting two uh, outfielders, right? Jose Martinez uh, in the National League. Obviously, can't play DH in the National League because there's no DH. Played some outfield. So it looks like, you know, this year. He's going to kind of be like our Jesus Aguilar that we had last year. Really just playing DH may put him in the in a corner outfield spot if we need him. Um, and then Randy Arozarena, he made his debut last year with St. Louis, only had 20 at bats. Uh, he did hit, he hit one home run, had about a 300 batting average. But in um, double A and triple A combined last year, he hit 344. 15 home runs, 54 RBIs, 17 stolen bases. He's 24 years old. Could be a could be a you know he has a bright future in the league. Be a sleeper. He could he definitely could be a sleeper. You know who he really reminds me of? I was looking at his highlights. He kind of reminds me of a Jacoby Ellsbury. Remember Ooh, Jacoby Ellsbury from Boston? Jacoby Ellsbury. He can get on base, plays great outfield, occasionally can hit for power. Um we I could see him you know, filling in for a Kevin Kiermaier on an off day. I could see him definitely being a pinch runner in games. Uh, he could be great. And then you have Jose Martinez, who hit 269 last year, 10 home runs, 42 RBIs. A good power bat on the right side. We have a lot of, you know, we've talked about how we're, you know, you know, heavy on the left-handed side of the plate, so we got a right-hander. Um, and then we have that first-round draft pick. So it is kind of, I, I do like these moves that the Rays have made because it shows me that the Rays are prioritizing the big league lineup this year. Right. In a lot of moves, you see them getting prospects, you see them, you know, building up the farm system, but now they're actually, they're really prioritizing the big league lineup because they know this year we have a shot at winning it all. Um, so I do like that. I will preface this real quick. We're very top heavy when it comes to um, DH first base and kind of outfield right now we picked up hunter renfro right we picked up yoshi 
We got guys like Nate Lowe, Mike Brosseau. Now we got Jose Martinez. We obviously got G-Man. I still think one of those guys I mentioned is probably going to be in a trade along with maybe another pitcher for potentially a catcher. We still need that. We still need catchers. Um, so I don't. I just don't see them keeping all of those guys I just mentioned because that's not the type of – those aren't the type of players Rays, you know, usually prioritize anyway. We don't normally prioritize power hitters, DHs, first basemen. We usually prioritize, you know, relief pitchers, guys that play up the middle, you know, scrappy outfielders, stuff like that. So we expect to see a trade with someone. Just don't trade G-Man. I don't think they're going to trade G-Man because he's a fan favorite. Yeah. Rays, you know, they like their fan favorites even though – they oftentimes do trade away. So Tampa, Tampa would be burned to the ground. Now. <laughs> By me. If okay, all right. I'm dying. I'm so sorry. I forgive you. <coughs> I've just been dying recently. I'm, please forgive me. We need um, G-Man to save you. We do need G-Man. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the potential race lineup for 2020. And... One thing that we had talked about was there wasn't a lot of outfield depth. Yeah. And um, I think a couple of big trades they've made this offseason so far, they've been adding to that. Yeah. So that's – We, you know, good to we see. had to see Tommy Pham and obviously Garcia go, but we have Renfro. We just got Jose Martinez, Eros Rina. So we are still, you know, we're back on track where we want to be outfield-wise. I saw someone on Twitter, out of all things, you guys know I love Twitter, um, a guy by the name, I'm going to shout you out just because I got to give you credit, Matt Germain, if I pronounce that correctly. I hope so. He put together like kind of a projection for the 25 man roster for the Rays. At catcher, you got Zanino, Mike Perez, then you got Choi, uh, Yoshi, Brandon Lau, Willie Adamas, Yandi, Joey Wendell, and then outfield, you got Renfro, Arizona, Kevin Kiermeyer, uh, Austin Meadows. And then for DH, you got Jose Martinez. Pitchers, you got Charlie Morton, Blake Snell, Tyler Glass now, Ryan Yarbrough, Brandon McKay. And then relief, you got uh, Pagan, Anderson Rowe, Alvarado Castillo, Colin Poche, Oliver Drake, and Yanni Trinos. That leaves some other guys out of the picture, like a Daniel Robertson, like a Nate Lowe, like a Mike Brasso. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with the lineup this year and potential, like I said, potential trades that they could make to maybe bring in another catcher, maybe bring in another pitcher, maybe another outfielder that we could need. Um, so like I said, we're kind of top heavy, you know, with the bats, DH, expect to see a trade somewhere in there. Uh, but they they may just go quiet the rest of the offseason. They may not do anything else. I per Honestly, I think the lineup will be perfectly fine where it is now. I would like us to see, like to see, you know, a minor league catcher develop where, you know, he could step into a third string role because – I just don't think Zanino is going to, you know, have the uh, endurance and the, you know, durability to be able to catch every night. And then Perez, you know, has some struggles behind the plate, has some struggles hitting, and so does Zanino. So I like to see that happen. Um, that's my spiel on the race for now. Yeah. You got any more to spiel? No. Okay, well, let's let's move on to the best part of the week. Connor, come, come here, Connor. Before you get into it, it's time that um, – you, what, one second. I'm going to exit the shot really quick, and I will come back. Connor, close your eyes. Make sure his eyes stay closed. I'll be right back. Do I look like G-Man? I'm going to have to edit that out. <laughs> this commercial break is brought to you by Eels. <laughs> Eels. Eels. Um, is his eyes still closed? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay, keep him closed. Keep I'm him so closed. terrified. Ah! Oh, I hear noises. All right. You want Do me to come I... on this side of you? Oh. Keep him closed. Okay. Open your Very eyes. Close. <gasps> it's a red. It's a joy jersey. It's a joy jersey. Yes. Hey, I want, okay, we got to make it like the MLB press conferences where you, you you know, you're like kind of standing there when everyone's taking the pictures and you got to you got to put the jersey on for everybody. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, I want to stay in the shot. Oh, oh, this is the greatest. This is the greatest Christmas present of my life. 
Look at that. That's, you're the only person I've ever seen put on a jersey like that. <laughs> well, it's already buttoned. Yeah, yeah I know. That, that was... How, how's it fitting? Is it good? Oh, my goodness. And he'll grow right into it. He's <laughs> constantly gaining weight. Turn, turn around. Let's see the toy on the back. No, we're done. <laughs> That's it for Joy Joy. We're done, so. We're done, so. I'm, I'm actually going to share uh, Choi Joy with my back to the screen. <laughs> so you can see the Choi. So you can see the Choi. All right. This week, G-Man got his shipment of 24. That's two dozen Skyline balls. Baseballs, that is. Okay. Now, Skyline is a South Korean baseball organization. They run one of the main professional leagues in South Korea, and they make a lot of great professional gear. It is one of the first leagues that Choi Boy played with, and uh, it is also where he still gets a lot of gear, including the 24 balls that he ordered last week. <laughs> One thing you really got to respect and appreciate about G-Man is, yes, he loves his team. He loves playing for the MLB, but it hasn't taken away that hometown pride. He loves being South Korean. He's proud of his country, um, and he's proud of his roots. Uh, he stays connected by, you know, playing with and coaching the Little League teams and uh, even uh, staying involved with Skyline, which was the South Korean league that he started with. So, G-Man, we appreciate you. There are a lot of people that when they get to the big leagues, they, it's kind of like a big forget you to where they came from. And uh, G-Man hasn't lost that. So, we love you, man. Hometown oh, hero. We, we love, love you, G-Man. We, we love Choi. We love Choi. We love Choi. All right. Choi mm. to the world. All right. So uh, make sure to like, to comment, to subscribe. subscribe. There's a podcast. Listen to the podcast. Listen to it. If you don't enjoy looking at our faces. Yeah. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow on Elevated Sports.